I'm Dr. Kate Cook, and I'm here to give you an update on COVID quarantine and testing. And just to hold your attention, I'm gonna get not one, but two COVID tests right here on this video to show you that they're not that bad. So as with all things COVID, the information is constantly changing and as frustrating as that can be when the rules change, it means that we're following the evidence. As we learn more about this virus, we're adjusting our plans accordingly. And so one change that happened was last week, the CDC changed their recommendations on quarantine. So quarantine is the period of time that you're supposed to stay away from other people after you've been considered a close contact of someone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19. And the former recommendation was to quarantine for 14 days from your last exposure to someone who's infectious. However, because that was difficult to do, many people were refusing to get tested or refusing to identify their close contacts for fear of this prolonged quarantine. And so the CDC weighed the risks and benefits. Um, certainly, if you are symptomatic and are infected with COVID-19, whether or not you get a test, you are still putting other people at risk and potentially harming other people by being around them. And so they weighed the risk of shortening quarantine in the hopes that it would encourage people to get tested and to quarantine when it's recommended to do so. So this graphic I think is helpful and it compares if you are infected because of your exposure to COVID-19, how likely is it that you're going to give that infection to someone else? And so if you only quarantine for one day, there's over a 60% risk that you're gonna spread that illness to someone else. However, if you quarantine for seven days, your risk drops down significantly. And this part just kind of highlights the, the days seven to 14. The difference in the colors is without a test at seven days, you're still 10% likely to give that infection to someone else. But if you test negative at seven days, that risk is now just a little over 4%. Um, and so that's the recommendation that the CDC had made. One option is to end quarantine at seven days with a negative test. The other option is to end quarantine at 10 days with no test. And so you can see that either way, with a test or without, your risk of exposing or infecting other people is less than 2%. So that was a manageable risk that the CDC felt like was worth changing so that it would encourage people to actually get tested. So if you are symptomatic, if you are exposed, please get a test. That brings me to the next point of this, of this lecture <laughs> video is what are the kinds of tests? And so one kind of COVID test is an antibody test, which is a blood test to show if you have antibodies to the coronavirus in your bloodstream. It doesn't tell you if you're acutely infected. It doesn't tell you if you're protected from further infection or potentially how long you might be protected, but it's, it's information that's helpful to know how prevalent it has been in the community. So the other two tests that we use to determine acute infection are a PCR test, which is a test that is run in a lab and typically takes 24 to 48 hours to process, and it detects the nucleic acid information of the virus. So that's the most sensitive test that we have. It gives the most accurate results. It's usually collected by what's called a nasopharyngeal swab, which is the swab that goes way back into your nasal uh, cavity. It's a bit uncomfortable, but it's tolerable. It's fine. I think getting a blood draw is worse. Um, the other kind of test is a rapid antigen test. And those typically run in about 15 minutes. They're cheaper, you get quick results. Currently, they're usually collected by just a swab in the front part of your nose, so they're less uncomfortable, but their results are less accurate. However, in the setting that the CDC was using for shortening quarantine, the difference between the rapid antigen and the PCR was small enough that they were fine with either test being used. That being said, if your risk of infection is high, it's better that you get a PCR test because it's more sensitive. So I'm now going to show you what it's like to get both a PCR test and a rapid antigen test. So our first test will be the PCR test, which is the swab that goes to the back of the nasopharynx. It's the more uncomfortable test, but it is the more accurate test. So I'll show you what that's like. Another baby. 
Now we're going to do the rapid antigen test, which this specific one is the Binex Now, and it's provided through the State Department of Health through the school system. And this is what we're using right now to screen faculty and staff. And so the card opens and reagent, the drops just go in this well. The swab is the easy one in the front part of your nose, and the test runs in about 15 minutes. So here we go. Piece of cake. Fifteen minutes later, I'm negative. See how easy that was? Please get tested if you have been exposed or if you're having symptoms that could be related to COVID-19. Do your part. We're going to get through this.